it's on boomerang switch in multiple rounds, application to AES variants and deoxys. And the talk is given by Haoyang Wang. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Haoyang. Uh, the title of this talk is Boomerang Switch in Multiple Rounds, Application to AES Variants and <coughs> Deoxys. This is a joint work with Tom Perrin in the background. Well, it's lucky to be the last one. I can skip this background very quickly, OK? I use the same notation as the last talk. So here is a boomerang, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So boomerang is divided, uh, divide the cipher into two sub cipher, and there are one trial for E0 and another one for E1. And the probability can be computed, oh, can be computed by this. Then, uh, when the boomerang tag was first proposed, the two trials assumed to be independent. But, however, after some uh, following work and experiments shows that at the boundary of the two trials, there may be some dependencies and uh, so some, we have some positive effect or negative effect. For the positive effects, um, some results show that some active Xboxes at the boundary can be saved so that we can improve the boomerang distinguisher. So in order to capture this uh, dependency in the boomerang tag, a uh, similar tag is, was proposed. And EM is the part to contain the dependent part of the, sem of the two trials. Here I will just show uh, the letter switch and the S-box switch under the, the summit attack. So the left is a sem uh, letter switch. Letter switch happens when delta zero, uh, nebula zero equal to zero, which means that uh, here, so y3, y3 will equal to y1 because we x or zero difference to a value, it doesn't change anything. So on the other side of this uh, boomerang on this S-box level, it will return with probability one. So for the letter switch, yeah, the probability r is one. And then for the right part is uh, S-box switch, uh, the S-box switch happens when nebula zero equal to delta one. This is because uh, the difference between y1 and y2 is equal to delta one. So if we XOR a delta one to y1, this means that the y4 will equal to y1 and then y3 equal to y2. This just uh, on the, uh, so the pair of values on the other side, the boomerang just exchange the position. From the, 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 from the previous uh, side. So on the other side, the boomerang can return with probability one. So the final uh, probability will only count it for one side of this uh, boomerang, like here. Then in order, but in order, to in order to provide a systematic evaluation of the EM inside the sandwich attack, uh, BCT is proposed. So it focuses on the EM when, uh, when it is um, consists of a single Xbox layer. So it takes two. It, it contains two parameters here and here, and uh, the entrance for the table can be computed by this uh, formula. I will not explain. And the advantage of the BCT is that it can, it can cover the switching effect of ladder switch, as box switch, and the incompatibility. For example, the incompatibility corresponds to the zero entry of the BCT. So besides, the BCT offers a new switching effect, like compared to S boxes, S box switch where nebula zero equal to delta one, BCT doesn't. That, BCT does not require the value of a delta one, which means that during the boomerang switch, there might be some other values of a delta one, so that which could, so that could lead to a higher switching probability. Now, uh, motivation is like similar to the last talk: is can we extend EM to multiple rounds? If yes, can we apply the current switching technique to evaluate the R? 
First, let's determine the number of rounds in EM. So start with the idea of letter switch. The idea of letter switch is the wrong function of a cipher can be divided into two independent parts, which can operate in parallel. This figure is an example of uh, AES. As we know, a the state, internal state of AES can be departed into two parts up to two rounds. Here we omit, here we omit the last, uh, the remaining linear layers at, at the, of the second round because the linear layer has no impact on the switch uh, on the boom one switch. So here we can just see the we can divide the internal state into the right part and the blue part, and the each transformation can operate these two parts separately, and they have no interaction. So, so, the, so if the right part is only active in the lower trial, and the blue part is only active in the upper trial, so we can just assign the right part to be the, a part of the upper trial, assign the blue part to be the part of a lower trial. So in this way, all active S boxes can be passed with probability one. Then let's extend this idea. Uh, let's in, uh, record that the procedure of the boom run. So for the upper trial, it was first it was used in the encryption for encryption direction, which is a forward direction in, uh, when we encrypt. And the lower trial is used in the backward direction, which is the decryption direction. So in EM, if the forward diffusion of the active cells in the upper trial has no interaction with the backward diffusion of the active cells in the lower trial, a right coordinate of EM can be generated with probability one. So here uh, is a forerun EM of sk uh, skinny with probability one. So here's a upper trial shows a uh, diffusion pattern in four rounds starting from one single, starting from a one single uh, uh, cells, and the lower trial start is uh, also a four round diffusion, four round backwards diffusion, starting from one single active cells. So these two trials has no uh, overlapped active cells, so they have no interactions, so, when we, so this EM can, a right quartet with this EM can be generated with probability one. So the reason that why, why, e, why Skinny has uh, more runs in EM is that it has a slower diffusion layer than Skinny, uh, than the AES. Then we found uh, incompatibility in multiple rounds. Like see the, it is claimed that BCT can detect incompatibility while its entry is zero. So here is also an example of a two round EM of AES. So these two trials are valid with probability two to the minus uh, two to the power of minus seven, and for the first S box layer, first S box layer, there are only one overlapped, overlapped uh, S boxes, and the N BCT entry for this for this uh, for this uh, S box is two, is non-zero, and for the second S box layer, is only also uh, only one S boxes uh, overlapped. And the DBCT entry is also to non-zero. So, according to the BCT, is the, these two trials should be compatible in the boom run switch. But, however, this is not true. So we found that for the for the first S block layer here, the BD, BCT DFA9, DFA9, and DDT DFF1 cannot be non-zero simultaneously. This shows that this three value has some correlation in the boom run switch, in the boom run attack. So here we, sum, we, we summarize uh, uh, some obser observation on the S box in the boom run switch. So here we take into the delta zero, delta one, and nebula zero into consideration. So when we fix the value of uh, delta zero and delta one, the choices of nebula zero, the non choices is uh, limited and the maximum number of non-travel value of nebula zero is equal to two times L choose two plus one. And uh, then, of course, when we uh, fix delta zero and nebula zero, the choices of delta one is still limited. So in order to capture these observations, we propose 
uh, boomerang difference table, some uh, BDT in short. This is a very simple and straightforward uh, table. It's a combination of a BCT and BDT and takes into delta zero, delta one, nebula zero into consideration. Although see uh, this uh, formula is long, but the former part is a BCT, the later part is a DDT. That's all, and n is S box size. Even though we have uh, the three parameters in the table, the, but uh, the, this table is still very manageable, like for 8 bit S boxes. And uh, the time complexity for the construction is big O n to, to the power to n, which is exactly the same with the DDT. And uh, we will make the algorithm here. Please check the uh, paper for detail. And uh, some properties. Since a combination of uh, B, DDT and BCT, so we can convert BDT to DDT when like nebula zero equal to zero or equal to delta one. And also we can convert BDT to BCT. So in some evaluations, in some cases, we can just convert, use the DDT and BCT to evaluate the Boomerang switch for implicitity. And also the BDT can, can, can detect the uh, compatibility when the corresponding entry is zero. So for example, for the previous example, it can easily detect the incompatibility here. So I will show a uh, attack on turn round AES-256. First is the uh, attack model. We, we, you, we, our attack is under the related key attack, which is that the registry can choose a relation between several keys and get a encryption decryption oracle with this case. And also there's a special case like related sub key. So instead of uh, choosing a relation between master key, the other three is allowed to choose a relation between sub keys. So the advantage is obvious. It will be easier to obtain a desired related key sub, sub key difference in a nonlinear key difference, nonlinear key schedule, so that he can he don't have to pay some probability in the key schedule. And the disadvantages is it require complex key access key scheme, which means it will be less practical and sometimes even too contrived for academic interest. So this is our attack. We stick to relate key attack. Since the key schedule of AES is nonlinear, so we use the related k difference parts, different parts in the upper trial and the single k difference parts for the lower trial. And uh, the strategy to constructing the upper trial, we use the local collision like in this figure. So first, we introduce the difference into the internal state. Then after one round, the next uh, round key difference will cancel out the internal difference. So we can repeat this pattern for several times constructing this uh, uh, upper trial. And also when we're constructing the boomerang distinguisher, we apply the boomerang switch in two rounds in mind in order to gain some benefit. Now here is a, here is a upper trial, left is the upper trial of our attack, and the right is a, a lower trial of our attack. So the upper trial covers round one uh, to round nine, is nine rounds, and the lower trial covers round eight to round 10. Round 10 is used for key recovery. And uh, round eight and round nine is covered by EM. Okay, so then I will explain how to evaluate the two round EM by BDT here. So the color here, the red, blue, or the dash gray are fixed value. Only the green values are random. We don't care what the value it is. So first, the beta, the beta here, beta is a state difference. Gamma is a state difference. They are determined by E0 and E1, so they are fixed. So let's first take a look at the first S-box layer here. So first, they are only one overlapped active S-boxes, right? So with, for this S-box, we fix value of delta one, so that after shift through a mixed column, the difference of the first column can be canceled out by the uh, wrong key difference, so that at the second, at the second here, S box here, there are no overlapped S boxes. So after we fix, after we fix delta one, 
we can look into the BDT to check why, which values of Nebula Zero, can, uh, which satisfies that the entry of a BDT is non-zero. So after, and, uh, after we found the values of a Nebula Zero, the switching probability is obtained up to, up, uh, accordingly. Then for the, for the second S-box layer, even though there is no overlap S-boxes, but we still have to pay the switching probability because the Nebula 1 prime is uniquely determined by Nebula 0. So, even, so since Nebula 0 prime is 0 uh, due to the relation between BDT and DDT, so for simplicity, we can use the DDT here to evaluate the switching probability of the second S-box layer, like that with entry Nebula 1, 0, Nebula, Nebula zero, 0 prime. So the result of attack is we only need two related keys and time and data complexity is to the, to the power of 75. We can recover the four key. So compared to the result uh, uh, existing attacks like this, uh, even though they claim that like, the time is two to the power 45 is uh, lower, but they only can recover 35 sub k bits. So actually, if they want to recover the four keys, they will need to the power over to the power 221. And also, their attack model is a related sub k difference. So compared to them, we have both improvements on the attack model and uh, the complexity. And also, we apply the Bruno Street multiple rounds and BDT in four round AES 192 and uh, DOCSBC. So, we, we apply to the three current works. So, the first one is a, is a well known paper that it proposed the first related key boomerang attack on four round AES 192. And the second one is an improved. Based on, the pre, based on the first paper, and uh, its the result remains as the best attack. And then we apply to the Duke's SBC at 10 rounds. So I will only explain the improvement of the best attack on AES-192. The idea of the uh, original attack is they use a similar idea of a local collision, and also their improvement based on the of improvement from the first attack, uh, first attack of uh, AES 192, is that they optimize the boomerang switch in, in their boomerang distinguisher. And we have already, um, we have tried our BDT to do a re-evaluation of their boomerang and we found no, uh, no improvement. So we, then we try to, ex try to search a new upper trial and then we managed to extend the boomerang switch to two rounds. And also, the, there's a similar two round EM of our improved attack. Like, say, even here, the first S box layer and the second S box layer, we can see there's no overlap active S boxes, and so does here. But this does not mean um, this boomerang switch is uh, totally free because. Here, the delta one of this value and delta nebula one prime of this value is fixed. So we still have to use the BDT to evaluate this and this as boxes to get the switching probabilities. And the result that uh, we can, for the best attack, we can get an improvement not too high to the power 1.3. And uh, we re-evaluate the boomerang distinguisher of the first attack, and we did not change anything, and we found that the attack should be better, like with a factor of two to the power 4.8. And we also use a BDT to improve the Duke's BC 256, and the uh, improvement is two to the power 1.6. To conclude, so the slower diffusion in a cipher, the more rounds will be impacted by the switching effect. Then we introduce a BDT to easily evaluate the boomerang switch in multiple rounds, and then we propose an attack on 10 round AES 256, and the four round AES 192, and the DXPC 256. Thank you. Thank you.
So are there any questions? I have one. Uh, so do you think that you could combine your ideas with the ones from the previous uh, yeah, yeah, presentations so. in order to improve? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, of course. And it might provide better ap applications? And, yeah, we will try. <laughs> we will try. Okay. I think this uh, is, can match perfectly. You have started to look at this? Huh? Have you started to look at this? Um, no, not yet. <laughs> OK. Well, looking start. forward then to okay, new results. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If there are no more questions, then we'll go in to lunch that will be at the first floor, and we'll be back at 2. Thank you. Thank you to all the speakers. Thank you.